from Ukuvuna online. And we're going to be talking CPTD points um, as well as a very innovative plan for uh, a vegetable garden at school. Now, this is already, when they said that, I'm, I was already excitement and, and uh, inquiry about can I go and make something physical uh, the vegetable garden uh, they'll talk about it but obviously it addresses a very big need of sustainable um, feeding at a school and, and in a school environment so happy to have you guys and welcome before we start I just want to quickly um, share some of my slides uh, you will always know, it, it, I think Paul just used the word, he sounds like a broken record now, but I must uh, compliment him. He did not talk about the weather and before or after the cold front this, uh, this afternoon. Usually that's, that's the main intro. Um, but yeah, the broken record might be a broken record uh, in my mind, but I think it's critical, very uh, important and critical that, that we just you know, focus again on the Center for Technology is not something on the side of our lives. Technology is so core business in school these days. I mean, I don't go home and say I've got a technological home because I've got a TV and a computer and internet at home. I just go home. Someone this morning in Edutech Africa, a panel discussion that I was part of, uh, mentioned that one of the biggest disruption areas is our homes. We, we did not notice it, but suddenly we're home officing. We're sitting in offices at home. We've got bookshelves. We've got backdrops for Zoom. We've got uh, broadband internet. And our homes got disrupted, uh, but we don't talk about it as a dis disrupted home. We just live in it normally. And I think that's what our schooling space needs to do. And that's what the Center for Technology has been saying for many years now. We have to learn and teach and govern as we live in the space we live, in the age we live, with the tools that we live uh, with. So, so that's, the, that, that's the backdrop to the Center for Technology. Maybe just a few bullets to, to take care of. Uh, um, as they're on the screen, I mentioned Edutech Africa. It started this morning. It's a three-day conference. It used to be at the Sandton Convention Center. This year, it's virtual. So anywhere in the country, anyone can join all the great talks and exhibitions at Edutech Africa. Um, the 13th, 14th, and 15th of October, um, the, today and the next two days. And if you're interested, you just log in. It's free this year, so the conference content is available to everyone. I mentioned that the Center for Technology is on the constant lookout for great solutions and opportunities for schools. Uh, and today we're showcasing uh, Ukuvuna that, that crossed my path uh, two, three, four months ago with a great solution, uh, app-based solution for CPTD points and uh, kind of the, the YouTube or the Netflix for teachers to, to gain CPTD points, if I can frame it in my own words. I want to constantly remind schools that we're in a budget cycle uh, that has tough economic conditions. So what we want to do in the Center for Technology is to bring you solutions that add value. Not necessarily that's only for free, but where we can save money, we should. But where we can have more bang for our buck, I think is what we need to do. Where the spending of what we expense gives us more return. Um, something cheap is 100% wasted, although it was cheap, but something slightly more expensive is possibly going to change change the, the direction at the school. And then we constantly got to think of innovation. Uh, I think disruption has taken center stage in our minds over the last six months, but I want to frame it back to the point of let's innovate. Not everyone is all that um, creative to come up with brand new ideas but innovation is taking the ideas collaboration you know they say if you have a, one idea it's it's um, creativity but if you use 10 ideas it's it's called research <laughs> you, know, you put it into a paper um, if you take someone's idea it's called stealing but if you take a lot of ideas it's it's reach research and innovation goes along with that putting all the elements of our community our lifestyle together and say how does it work now and teachers need CPTD points, not because they need it, because they must want to need it. Uh, I have a joke that I don't know if it's going to go down well now, but there's a, a poster in, the, in a sermon that said, uh, we must do something. Uh, and he said, but it must be a different must. Uh, it must be like the wife uh, that told the husband, but you must kiss me every day. 
And then he came back home and said, must I kiss you now? And she said, yes, but not that kind of a must. It must be a must that you want to do, not a must that you have to do. And I think that's one of the, one of the problems we have with we should do it, and it becomes a compliance issue. And my next slide will talk to that, but let, let, let me quickly finish up here. Um, innovation should take us somewhere that we get to, get to new ideas. We've been saying in the Center for Technology that the school needs to think of new uh, positions, new thinking caps around the table when we have the SGB together. Next year, March, we'll be electing new SGB members. And there's the traditional portfolios. I know that. But I think someone on the SGB needs to be the CIO. Someone in the school management needs to carry the hat of the CIO, the chief information officer, the chief innovation officer, and then the chief uh, integration officer, if I can use all three of those, those eyes. And, and integration is what we're going to be talking about today. That's how we move between the virtual and the physical space and let systems talk to each other. Uh, so, so hang on uh, to your seats and let's see what we, what we offer you today. I quickly want to just, in the backdrop of what we're going to do, just share one snippet of what I've been telling schools over the last two, three years about the new normal. I had a talk about the new normal in the middle of 2018 already, where we said that the world we live in has already changed. It's not changing now. It has already changed. And I just want to frame one element of our lifestyle. You've got the picture of Netflix there. And just let's just look at how we consume entertainment. In the past, we had scheduled entertainment. The news was at 6. Dallas was at 9 o'clock at night. And for those of you that are, not old, that are not old enough to remember Dallas on Tuesday nights in the mid-80s, Dallas was scheduled. You could not see the next episode until next week. You could not see the previous episode. So there was a specific schedule. It was venue-based. It was on the TV, and the TV was fixed to the antenna in your living room. So it was it. And it was done in a group. Everyone in the room could see what's on the TV. That doesn't just go for Dallas, but that's how most of our entertainment was. Scheduled, location fixed, and in group. The world has suddenly transformed over the last two, three, four years with something like Netflix, something like YouTube into an unscheduled space. I pause TV, I pause live TV, I go have dinner and I come back and finish live TV. So it's on my schedule. It's not necessarily on the TV screen, it's on any mobile device. This little device has become the biggest TV screens. Couples lie in bed together and mom is watching one show on Netflix and dad's watching another show on Netflix in the same bed. And then it became personal. Dad's watching his show, sports, and mom's watching Grey's Anatomy or something like that. But we suddenly became unscheduled, mobile, and personalized. And that's where the challenge came, came with, with how we do CPTD training. And that's where I'm going to jump into it. CPTD has always been around. I think it's a great concept. I think as uh, governors at a school, as managers, professional managers at a school, we need to ensure that our staff are at the front end, the cutting edge, sometimes the bleeding edge of what is innovative and new. And sadly, in, in the context that I move around in a lot of people, CPTD points become a SACE activity. I just need to do SACE points. It's not professional development. It's a SACE issue. It's a CPTD issue. So it suddenly became a a floor of compliance versus a ceiling of best practice and innovation. And I think we've got to reframe ourselves there and say, let's just redefine that we do professional development to gain skill, to gain momentum. I want to talk about where is the joy of the development. Every time that I learn something new, I am excited. And I think most of us are. Compliance uh, view of CPTD is let's just tick the box and get the points. The ultimate question then is where is the fruit of the CPTD tree? If CPTD uh, is an opportunity to grow, we should be seeing better performance in our education system, better outcomes. And I think we're struggling to see that. So I'm opening up the floor and inviting Marinas and Sonia onto the stage with me to talk about Ukuvuna. What does that mean? It's an interesting word. And what does Ukuvuna do for CPD training for teachers? Uh, welcome, Marinas. Bye, welcome, Dank you that you're with us. 
Kajer van dag. Um, uh, Sonja, always good to, to have new faces around. Uh, I think Marinus is going to jump jump in. And yeah, tell us who Ukubuna is, what Ukubuna is, and what do you do for schools? Um, Rian, wow, what a phenomenal introduction. I'm inspired already just by listening to you. <laughs> That's just the introduction. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, maybe just, just, maybe just start by, by saying this. Um, uh, I, I was a teacher myself uh, for 10 years. Uh, I had a wonderful career as a mathematics teacher in Pretoria at Wurzkel Waterskloof. It was really during the high days. And, uh, but one of the things that I've, that I've realized only later on in my life is that I didn't have the, uh, the, the professional support uh, in, on, certain, on a certain level that I would love to have. Now remember, when I was a teacher, so I'm maybe giving a, a, away something about my age, uh, where CPD point wasn't <laughs> at play then yet, you know, but but uh, we stayed in contact with the whole world of training and development um, from a corporate pers perspective. But for all these years, I've been very actively involved in uh, the training and development of teachers. Me and Sonia, uh, we were basically we delved into the new science of learning and learning transfer and how people think and uh, process information, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But out of that thing, I've, I've always said, you know, there's two things that I want to do. Uh, apart from the other business, I want to do teacher development and uh, I want to make dog food. <laughs> and uh, we have to see with both currently, but it's just a, a sideline. Uh, but, you know, I was that type of teacher. Maybe I was that type of child. I always ask the question, where am I going to use this one day in real life? So I was a really a, a, a very practical, it had to be practical and tactical. Uh, a, a metaphor or a theory to me was a little bit too high and far-fetched for me. I really wanted to understand the practical use of, of it now. So something might sound nice in theory, but does it really work and how does it work? And I shared with Rian earlier, I mean, Sonia were, were asked about three years ago uh, to write a script uh, for uh, television and for radio on how to turn around a dysfunctioning school. And uh, unfortunately, that was never it because of budget constraints and so on. But that that's what the, what the type of things that I'll be thinking is there's some nice things, but will the nice things really impact on the quality of, 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 uh, of the training and teaching uh, on both levels? Will it impact the quality of my life as a teacher? But also will that, what I learned, how will that impact the children and the learners with uh, whom I work with? And I remember uh, a few years ago, I attended a seminar on type of similar type of things. And I was just blown away by the whole neuroscience thing. And I went back the very next day to my mathematics class. And I started to implement some of what, the stuff that I've learned with virtually immediate results. And I said, that's the type of stuff that we want to put into teacher's hands. So uh, when, the, when the name came up, Ukuvuna, you know, it was so interesting. If you look at, at, at the year numbers and its meanings, last year was actually called the year of the mouth. And look what happened with us. All of us, our mouths were covered with masks. Isn't that ironic, you know? And I felt that, that, that this time that we were entering was a time to harvest. Harvest potential, harvest opportunities, harvest of so many things. And look what happened. We went into a lockdown phase where so-called opportunities were lost. So can you see it's as if there's a big dream, there's a, a pushback from, from, from the dark side to, to stop us getting to that wonderful goal. But that being said, um, so I just thought to, to maybe just show you this, uh, this slide. And if you look at it at a seed, you know, everything starts in seed form, in seed form, every single thing. I mean, you started off as a seed. Can you imagine that, right? Any idea or any concept starts in seed form. And I've often wondered, thought to myself, I wonder if the person that thought about, let's say the telephone, the person that first thought about this thing, was he the person that actually went out and did it. And, and I, I, I'm not 
of the opinion that once a seed is, and I really believe Ukuvuna is part of the, Ukuvuna was a seed planted in my mind. And I really believe it's time, at this time, Ukuvuna is giving birth now to, to its first uh, beautiful babies. And the fact that that seed has potential, it's got potential to go to the gigantic tree, but the question is will it? And I, I hope this uh, picks on some, uh, you know, some things in your own life to say, gosh, you know, what seed has been planted in my mind? And what has I done about the seed that was given uh, to me? So just to end off my introduction, you now we all have potential. But here's the thing, and think about the learners, but think about yourself and think about you as a teacher as well, right? You, we've got potential, but if you add nothing to that potential, what are you left with? Still nothing, right? So if you come and you, you add your potential, and why do I say that? Let's say, for instance, I was a, I'm a born teacher. I lost. Now I am a mechanic, right? Can you see the potential, the skill that I have, it's misaligned with my potential. But if we have potential and we add to that appropriate skill, now that brings confidence and confidence. And the whole purpose of Ukavuna is really to bring appropriate skill to you, to teach you to really, um, I don't wanna oversimplify, but it's not to make your life easier, but it's really to enrich your life, to really go to a next level of, uh, within the teaching context, but also, as you see later, within uh, a context of impacting your community. Right, so um, uh, Sonia, it's, it's wonderful to have her as a colleague and a, and, and a co-host. So uh, Sonia, just fire away and just uh, say what you, what you felt. Know, in your, right. Hello, everybody. Oh, it's wonderful listening to you. I think I can spend even more time this afternoon <laughs> with everyone. Um, <laughs> When I look at harvest, it's such a funny time to harvest. Everybody says, oh, but we put no, nothing in the ground, you know, the soil. Uh, we, this last few months, we've been hamstrung. We've all been at home. Uh, we've been, um, you know, restricted in so many ways. Um, but the truth is that even in the midst of the restrictions, new overlaps have become very visible. And those new overlaps actually bring us a new synergy. And what I realized when I spoke to Marinas on the Ukubuna side that with COVID-19, there is a new demand on leadership to emerge with school governing bodies because they stand for entire communities. communities. I mean, when I was working in the rural areas for five years in the Karoo, in the Northern Cape, um, and we lived there as well, I was amazed to see that you can be on the school governing body, but you're also a teacher, but you're also a parent. And previously you was a learner at the same school. that has come out um, in, in, in the existence of all of us. And um, that's why I believe that this challenge uh, can't just be about doing CPTD points. Because I say to Marinas, I tell you, there is not a school that I know of that I've worked with where I have been a parent and my children, I've got five daughters, and uh, I tell you, two of them are still at school. Um, where food schemes, uh, food security and feeding schemes have not been um, under enormous attack. Either there was no funds coming through, there were no deliveries, um, but uh, the bottom line is that some people who only had one meal a day, that routine could not continue. So we have to become very practical. We can't just say, oh, educators have a workload, learners need development, parents have expectations. We need to say it's not a fragmented approach. Let's be holistic and say educators have development, which they often put on the back burner. 
especially in times of challenge. I mean, I have a sister that's a departmental head in the Cape Flats schooling area. And she always tells me, I don't have time for my CPTD development because I'm too busy fixing lives, fixing families. Um, she also plants vegetable gardens. Um, and I say, but you know, surely we must be able to integrate these things. Learners have expectations, have workloads. Parents have workloads, development and expectations. And often we have more than one position. Uh, when we did some work with uh, uh, businesses, where we place learnerships in schools to assist the, the school governing body with administration or uh, do the gardens or even assist in classroom activities with stationery and printing and all the rest of it. We realized how that, um, how integrated a school community actually is. And if we're going to overlook the integration as a leverage area, uh, we, we're going to be working too hard. It needs to be easy. And we must bring back the fun. And how can there be fun if we mm. don't get our hands dirty with something that is like play? Mm. Listen, I, I just want to say for, for, for those of you who don't know, uh, Sonia's actually in her first class airplane, was he flying? You know, <laughs> she actually had a neck operation. So we're so thankful, Sonia. It was yesterday that she joined us uh, for the session. But you know, uh, Sonia, really silly correctly, you know, um, we, we, when we started about our, our own CPD uh, journey, I, it's exactly like, like you said, Rian, you, you must, you must, you must have to must, is that correct? You, you, you must want to want to. And I really thought, you know, if, if I had, if I created, of, uh, we and the team create an, an app for teacher to do CPD points, I would want them to say, wow, this is so interesting. I want to go to the next, next model, not I have to go to the next model. So, the, so our challenge was to really create content that excites teacher and said, you know what, I, and, and drives him to learn more about what they are reading or hearing. And, uh, and Sonia, you said uh, it so beautifully that uh, the educator is the catalyst. Just your thoughts on that, uh, Sonia. Yes. You know what, so many times, uh, especially in these days, we look to educators to be a panacea. I mean, they must fix everything. <laughs> you know, they have to fix the lives of, of, of the school communities, the parents, the teachers, the system. Um, they have to provide food. I mean, I know teachers, you know, they out of their own pockets, they buy stationery uh, for their children. And, you know, mm -hmm. they, uh, they do so many things. They uh, are nurses and they are even the protectors to make sure the children get uh, safely across the school, you know, in areas where um, there is much violence, you know, and that they do actually get home and that they are protected. Mm -hmm. Teachers just have so many roles that they have to perform. Um, they are the catalyst in many respects, but we have to ensure that they are not being consumed by all of this activity because mm -hmm. we place such a demand on them as the only stable pillar often mm -hmm. in a shaking world that if we can integrate our efforts behind the scenes and make it easier for them, then mm. that will ensure that we honor them as catalysts and that we are creating a, a space for them that is safe where they can increase the rate of change, of development, of growth, of uh, explosion of potential into appropriate skill, like you said, Marina. But mm. then we have to honor them as catalysts and we have to understand that there is a very important important role player, which is the school governing body as an authority that has to be honored. You know, so many times when I was very young as a mom, I would approach the teachers to do things for me or to make changes or to help my children. And as I grew up in the system, I realized that it's no point trying to approach the educator. They have to report to the school governing body in the end of the day. So then I learned to approach school governing bodies because they have the final decision to make. After all, they are parents. They are educators. They are role players. They are often business representatives. And as a whole team, they look at uh, the well after the well-being of that school and that entire community in many respects through their decisions. Mm -hmm. So as we want to support catalysts who are educators, we need to go to school governing bodies and say to them, let's give you solutions that you mm -hmm. can apply that can actually make life easier for your educators, make life easier for the catalyst to do mm -hmm. even uh, greater, to have even greater impact. And that's what mm -hmm. Ukubunga is about. 
Thank you, Sonia. So, so what we did, you know, this, I mean, as a teacher, there's a lot of CPD tra training. I mean, there's live courses, there's um, even online courses and so on. But what we found, a lot of those courses are during set times, like the Dallas program. So, Rian, <coughs> yes. Uh, I was in the chips area, and then in chips and mirage. <laughs> all right. So for the younger generation, call us afterwards and just find out all about that. <laughs> but uh, but you know what? It was a set time, and I thought you know can't we? So my whole, my initial idea was to to sell comfort to the teachers, you know, because you're so busy, you know. And I'm a night owl, so I love to you know browse through stuff late in the evenings and so on. I thought, but what if we could we could create good quality content for teacher that doesn't consume a lot of the time, but that's really on point in terms of the, the themes, uh, the, the quality of the product, and also the time they have to spend uh, with this uh, device. Uh, so um, so we've, we've launched our first uh, uh, 20, uh, 21 programs and there's about 40 to come within the next few months uh, for, for teachers to go online anytime uh, on any device, uh, and uh, as I told Rian earlier, we had the whole Apple mentality, sorry for the Samsung guys, but uh, we had this whole uh, Apple mentality that, you know, you don't, you shouldn't have to press more than three times to get to where you want to be. So it, it is a phenomenal user-friendly app uh, where you can browse through the wonderful courses uh, that we offer, that we offer. And, you know, so what it basically consists about is a short video clip that you will really find inspiring. I, I kid you not, if you if you see one of them, you would want to see <laughs> the following one, it's like a series, a Netflix series. Right? You would want to see what's the follow up on, on, on this one. And we've taken normal um, uh, um, topics like discipline, for instance, or teacher burnout, or how do I connect with my children? What is the social classroom? There's so many topics, but we've, we've really just upped it in, in such a way that you would want to learn more and immediately implement it. Uh, then after the video, there's a great article that connects with the video clip. And after that, there's ob obviously your assessment uh, that you, and when you uh, press the, the uh, submit button, your part of the job is done. Then, you know, we'll co uh, communicate with you in a, in a very friendly way afterwards. So uh, I just said this about a variety of relevant topics that um, comes from our website. You can see, you know, what is a trauma-safe learner? Develop, level, develop high-order thinking, the science of learning, develop a growth mindset, team teaching, social emotional learning. There's so many great topics. And uh, the whole idea is uh, that you can really do it wherever you want to. So that's my beautiful wife. She's sitting on the bed doing her CPD points, you know. <laughs> uh, and that's the type of, of, of quality material that you will find. This one is about uh, teacher burnout, you know, and some stuff like uh, intellectual energy. Uh, and, and it's really as simple as you're gonna download the app, right? Download the app on your phone, or just go uh, to the website and, and just access all the, the courses um, from there. Right, so um, the whole idea is that, that we really uh, assist school governing bodies. Sonia? Yes, absolutely. Because um, what we say is that so many times a teacher says to me, but I'd like all of the teachers in our school to take hands. And I want it to happen for everybody else as well. And we just realized that probably at this time, being budget cycle season, that school governing bodies are in the better position to make it happen for a whole school at once. Um, if you have one person in a school um, following this process, you have one star that is shining brightly. But if we can have an entire school rise up, and that is in the hands of the school governing body, then we will see new pockets and hubs of excellence in South Africa supported by maintaining the professional standard that really comes under pressure in times of shaking like we've had now. And no one knows whether there's gonna be a second wave, how it's gonna be managed, and a third That's wave, right. etc. But what we do know is that if we can, based on what we've learned with the first wave, you know, overcome all of the restrictions, and I believe Ukubuna helps with that, we can actually hone in and say, 
well, where do we start meeting needs of our school community mm. so that we yeah. strengthen our mm. core? That is really the pillar in any community, which is our school governing body and our educators that are working alongside those in the community that have the youth. That is the next era of leadership being prepared. Thank you. Thank you, So we are slowly running out of time, but so coming back to the whole food thing, and, uh, and that is the exciting part of what the offering today. And, uh, you know, obviously this session in a certain sense is a marketing sense, but on another level, it's absolutely, absolutely not that. Because, you know, our heart is really to, to change the landscape of education in our, in our country. And I know, you know, there's gotta be a will from schools and teachers to want to adopt this type of stuff. But we said we don't want to waste time. Time is too short for us not to have an impact um, on people's life. And that's really, that was part of the heart of the birthing of Kavunas to really make a change. But, so if you choose to, uh, to or if you encourage your schools to enjoy a Kavuna or join a Kavuna, there's a, 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 a spin-off to that. And Sonia, she was, she was something about that. Yes, well, we've just decided to dare school governing bodies to enroll their entire teacher core and say to them, you know, it is planting season literally right now. Um, we've joined hands with agriculture. They are an absolutely phenomenal group and they've got this a summer seed pack, uh, which um, can plant a three by five square meter garden. And we then said at Ukubuna that um, we are willing to, I know they've got a lovely manual that shows you everything. They've got ropes, they've got a little ruler that you can measure how far seeds should be apart and how deep, and it explains everything so beautifully. And they've even got fertilizer in their summer pack. But what we said is if, if an entire school sign up, we send them such um, a, a seed pack to plant. And in fact, they can even obtain more of these seed packs from agriculture, we can help them obtain it and make sure that they are ready for the January, February school year start with some bite sizes for their learners because these veggie gardens actually create a supplement to um, the, the, the security scheme of food security schemes that they already have. It won't replace it entirely unless they make a real effort and say, okay, well, let's see how many learners we have and how big do we want to go. And we can help with that entire process. But to get started and to make sure that there are some bite sizes for every school available, you have to plant now. In fact, they say that the season's running out. If you haven't planted by November, you won't have something by in January, begin February. And then in February starts the winter season planting. So it really teaches us that we have to be ahead of any processes that we want to counter mm. um, that could be detrimental to our communities. And for putting food on the table, I'm a big supporter of brain fuel and a neuroscientific uh, fuel for the brain through eggs and milk and soups, etc. And I can tell you that just having this, uh, having to see a veggie garden go up at the school and knowing that there's something we can put in a pot that can be nutritious, that can feed, it means we can. We are the people that can. And I think that is such an assuring thing that we can do it all by ourselves. On top of it, whichever school joins, they will be able to look at a short little video. And in January, February, they'll be able to do CPTV points uh, with this planting of the garden. And because we want to say to teachers, if you're going to take such initiatives, you better get some professional points for it. We know you don't want to become a permanent farmer but you should get at least five CPTV <laughs> points for every seed you plant. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a, that's a lot. Uh, so yes, I want to come uh, in here quickly, quickly, Marinus. Um, it, I, th I think that's one of the gripping things. Yes, you've got to get the whole school to sign up. And so, but planting a garden is possibly the, the biggest, or a vegetable garden, is possibly the biggest thing that I've seen in my kids' own life. When my wife started planting a vegetable garden, and it's planning... It's engagement with the season. It's engagement with mathematics. You know, coordinating. But then the for dinner, my kids run out and I'll snay spinasi off. Number one, they know what spinasi looks like when it's in the garden. But number two, they eat what they harvest. There's, there's a big psychological 
mean, for, for me, that is just, I, I like that plan so much. Just wanted to add to that because I've seen it in my own, in my own kid's life. Mm. Sorry, continue, uh, Marinas. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you, Rian. Uh, Sonia, so uh, just your closing comments about the garden, Sonia. I say, if you miss this planting season, you have to wait till February. So we strongly it? encourage everybody to join in and let's be part of feeding our nation. Let's give them mega bites. But, but Sonia, you said something about five points for every seed. Was that the truth? So from a call to action, I, I see someone has, has posed a question. The website and the app will be live by the end of this week. All right, so then everything where you can enroll, you can enroll right now, but it will be live from the end of this week. So, and I'll say something more about that right now, but just for, for the future, right? So what we, we're planning as well, online conferences, addressing school specific needs. You know, there's a lot of school that says, you know what, Marina, we need this and this and this. And we are committed from a budget point of view, of view to really uh, create and develop uh, programs of high uh, caliber specifically for your school's need. And now third I said, let us come to you. We want to go on a roadshow next year and visit all the schools, just meet our clients, meet some teachers and just hear some great stories and struggles so we can be pinpoint accurate in terms of addressing needs. Um, subject specific development, also face-to-face -face conferences should uh, um, go with allow us. So the call to action is, um, Right after this session, you are welcome to send us an email to say hello at kubuna.online. Um, and then we'll take the process from there. All right. So you'll, you'll populate all your teachers. Or if you're just an individual teacher that want to enroll, that's also uh, possible. And obviously, after payment is being done, and uh, we share that with you, you are ready to go. Um, the nice thing about this is, and, uh, you know, we've got about, we will have, in four months time, I've close to 40 programs. And, and the nice thing is for a really a fractional price, all the teachers in the school have unlimited access to all the programs, you know? So obviously there, there is some great advantage in group sessions and stuff like that, but you will be able to do all your CPD points just in an online format, should you wish. And we really try to structure it in such a way that it does engage you as an individual but we also encourage collaboration with your colleagues. So it, it would be difficult to just share, share. I'll keep this news to yourself. You know, you would, you would want to share it with other people. So there's uh, me and Sonia's numbers. Um, so you can call us directly after this uh, session as well, and we will follow up with you. Uh, so if you want to write that down, I think we can make a screenshot and just share with it uh, with, with you as well. And then, um, the last thing is, and as, as I said, these are our uh, contact details. That'll be the website. Uh, that is our email address. And then you've got our numbers that we shared there that you're welcome to contact us. And as I said, from Thursday or Friday, hopefully by Thursday, uh, you will have full access to everything that the Kubuna offers. And Rian, uh, you've been so gracious to uh, make this space and time available. Sonia, thank you for sharing your time as well. And we really look forward to engage further with FETUS in the future and share this journey together. Thanks, guys. Marina's uh, Sonia, bye-bye, donkey. Uh, Sonia uh, sitting with her neck brace after an operation <laughs> yesterday, so that's commitment <laughs> to the cause. Uh, the website is live and going, but I'm understanding that all the programs and the app will be populated uh, later in the week, but the website is actually, uh, I've visited it several times, and, and there's some good uh, material in there. I posted a promotion video that's on YouTube into the chat box so all the attendees can have a look at that. So from my side, yeah, Marina, so you can stop sharing your screen. That uh, We're good with that. Uh, just wanted to say a big thank you. I've got one quick question for you. So uh, yes, CPTD points, there's an app to do it. So it plays to the fact that we can train uh, and develop mobile and scheduled and so and there's a wide array of, of plans. Um, just confirm a school can sign up as a business or an individual teacher can sign up and follow his or her own. So, so you're not limited to the school signing up on your behalf. Absolutely not. In, okay, individual so, teacher or a school, yes. Both. Okay, so the, the, the pockets of excellence, the champions that want to drive forward can can contact you and, and be the light. Uh, Absolutely, in, in you know, and especially let's say a teacher 
uh, let's say school enrolled and a teacher was at a certain school and he leaves the school, you know, so uh, he's already been paid for. So, you know, he stays in that cycle uh, okay. of, of that year as well. Okay, brilliant. And then the, the, the vegetable garden, which really gets my juices going. <laughs> if, if the school signs up now, there's a quick turnaround time, a seed pack to be delivered. And then someone Absolutely. at the school must champion this. The seed pack arrives, but it's not going to plant itself. So the space, you can get learners involved. You can make it a project at school. Um, yeah. how, how do you see that happening? You deliver it and you've got videos for them to like it, but they've got to embrace it and make it part of let's fix uh, sustainable feeding in the school. Um, it's not a program for, for, the, for the general workers. It's actually for the teachers okay. and the learners. Remember, remember that teacher that they, uh, if they do the course, they they gain CB points for that as well. But as well, you professionalism in the whole video content and the material. It's in such a way that it's it's very practical. It's it's step by step, you know. And and I mean, even if you're not a gardener, you'll be able to do that successfully. I remember as a school child. Remember we had to plant the little beans in the cotton and see that going, you know? <laughs> yeah. it's really as simple as that uh, yeah. Yeah. So, Sonia, so, any no, yeah, I, I think uh, I can just say these beans will grow okay <laughs> all right <laughs> good stuff, they're, they're, good they're, they're, stuff. I've seen them grow. absolutely get in there and get going and get into the soil because we all want to see the schools in january february 2021 having mm. their first megabytes great mm. stuff Guys, that's all from our side today. I'm going to hand over to Paul Remkin uh, just to uh, to close the session for us. Uh, I really appreciate uh, everyone's attendance. Uh, thank you to our speakers that's sharing uh, a message of excitement and hope and, and something for the future. Uh, I've never had green fingers, but I'm going to try. I'm really going to try <laughs> and, and see, see how that goes. Uh, Paul, over to you. Thanks for, for hosting this session in the background for us. Is there any? I, I didn't see any questions. I saw some comments, but um, Marina's took care of that. Uh, but from your side, no questions? Yeah, no, thanks very much. Yeah, no questions from my side. I think we handled some of them as they came through. Um, uh, Marina's picked up some of the questions there. There's just a message of thank you very much from Vilna. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, and thanks very much, Sonia and Marina. It's a really interesting project. Um, I look out my window here and I look at my garden and it needs some work on it. So I've got to get into that vegetable garden as well. So you've given me that challenge. You said everybody can garden. I'm not quite sure if I look at my garden, if that's true, but we'll try to make <laughs> plant soon. So thank you very much. I think it's really encouraging to see the passion and the drive and the thought process that's gone behind this project. And um, yeah, we all obviously guide schools and advise schools to engage with the process and in in individual educators as well. Um, just as a finish off, folks, our FedSAS website, um, there it is in front of you, www.fedsas.org.za. Please visit that on a regular basis. Um, it is getting updated as soon as there's new news going through. So please pop into that. Um, I normally say once a week, just pop in and see what news might be coming through. Um, next week, or later this week, rather, first before we get there, we have got two other sets of webinars coming through this week. Um, we're talking about learner leadership, um, a planned process that we've got to train and assist in training the RCL learner leaders that have been recently elected um, way before next year. Um, we want to really get involved and assist schools in training those learners, um, those that are leaders in the process. Um, they form part of the governing bodies in your high schools, and they're very important that we do assist you in getting training done. Obviously, very difficult in this time of the year, this place where we sit in our lives, um, costs and travel um, restrictions, um, but we have got a plan, and we'd like to on on next uh, tomorrow. Sorry, tomorrow at three o'clock, just discuss it with you. Just chat to the the learner leaders, the educators that are involved in learner uh, learner leadership. Just chat to them about what the plan may may look like and where we develop it from there. And then on Thursday, we're talking racial harmony and transformation in schools. We've got two sessions: the Ines Afrikaans Square second and the Engels Ian Driedata. Um, it's also a discussion session, but really something to, to really we urge as many schools as possible to attend that process, those, those two webinars. And then next week, we've got a very interesting one, competition commission, um, something that you people or people might not think is really relevant in the school environment, but really interesting discussion um, with regards to the competition, uh, 
Competition Commission and their involvement. You will notice that all of those webinars are free webinars. We encourage people to attend. It's of importance to our schooling nationally that people do attend those. So please um, hook up onto those. Details will come through. You will get a follow-up email after the session to pick up the details from there. Um, very briefly, just our eTalk magazine, Rian mentioned it. Um, there are the details. I'll also send a link through to everybody with regards to that when you get our link that comes through from there. Um, and then finally, yeah, um, Rian, thank you very much. I'll give you the last word. I'll just stop sharing. Thank you very much for your involvement and your drive. I know you, you're probably sitting in front of a computer a lot over the next few days with edgy talk going on. I've got an overseas conference that's happening. Um, unfortunately, it's in America, so it's got to be a few long nights ahead of us to see what's going on and keep abreast of what's happening. But yeah, all the best with your edutech side. Um, I'll hand over to you for the for the final words, Rian. Just a very short thank you uh, to my panelists and to you and a quick word of uh, if you don't plant a seed, you cannot harvest. So I think that that is the lesson for today. You've got to put some something in the ground for the harvest to grow. Uh, so have a great day, everybody. Take care. Thanks very much, everybody.